Yeah, so there's there's a lot more of effluence than I thought before. This Whole Foods is very busy. It's a Friday evening. They're selling a lot of expensive stuff. Nothing I want, though. I'm looking for some bulk bulk uh, dried tomatoes in in particular. And there's another choice that I can check out. It's that that other one. It's nice to be able to walk around somewhere different. Somewhere different. It really is. Not knowing where things are. I love it. It's like having Alzheimer's early on. I'm like, I keep coming and going to new towns and asking, where am I? What do I do? Every every new city. It's awesome. It just prepares me for when I get Alzheimer's later. It's kind of amusing to think. Uh, how some businesses interact you got dermatology and Starbucks right next to each other just look at the businesses Starbucks is nearby and you get an idea of how people combine their activities their business activities okay I'm gonna go get some dermatology and then have Starbucks afterward all right I slept a night here at the uh, Safeway I see they do give warnings Violators towed, not liable, and then they put the date for this guy. The Safeway gave those warnings during the daytime, and I was parked at the bus station during the daytime. I, I'd make a habit of that, parking somewhere else during the daytime. They gotta come out at night to catch me. It's so frustrating trying to find decent bread. It's so rare to find it with less, with about 7% salt, 4% percent fiber one percent or less of sugar those are my standards and those are extremely rare i could find low sugar and high fiber higher kind of high fiber but it's going to have high salt in, in all safeway breads the best of the safeway breads it's just so hard to find a good ratio i mean 14 percent uh, salt sodium is too high they can make it with seven percent zero would be ideal but seven percent i think is somewhat acceptable at least but most of them they have to jack up the salt all right i went to natural grocers to get this i don't know what vitamin cottage is about and it's got the the ratio i'm looking for Okay, I'll, I'll settle with 8%, I'll settle with 1 gram, 0 is preferable, fiber is jacked up, 4% uh, I would accept. That's my ratio, and it's so rare to find, 350. Right, it looks like I might be able to work with 4 strands. I want 4 strands for my feet. I want to make some kind of cushion to put around my toes at least. All right, this is gonna be the thickest yet. And it moves, the project moves kind of fast because the thickness covers a lot of ground really fast. Uh, so I wanna make the sock and it's it's to here right now. Gonna make it all the way, but it's, it's, work, it's perfect size so far. All right, I made this foot yesterday and that wore it last night, got down to 27 with the windshield, and this thing worked great. My foot was warm. Four, four yarns. I had to buy another one because I want to make the other foot. And then my other foot got cold enough where I had to put this on. And I felt a slight difference. There's definitely a difference with this and having just uh, the socks on. Um, I will say that this feels almost like having my shoes on for warmth so I don't know what to think of that I don't like sleeping with my shoes on this is a lot more comfortable to sleep with see these people right here they have to move so much stuff in back and forth every day and I question like what do they do when it rains they have to step out they have to move things in and out back and forth they slept in the back and they also have a dog but I just don't like to have to do that I don't want to have to they also, they also had to leave a cooler outside and and then some kind of water tank on top of that cooler outside the car that's not something I would want to do 
I don't know how long they've been doing this type of uh, lifestyle, but um, yeah, it's it's really it's it takes a lot of moving things the way they're doing it. All right, so I got this bit of a triangle. You wonder how I could turn this thing into a a foot warmer. It's gonna take a lot of stitches. So I already got a knot. This is this is difficult. And I want to count like practically every time where the how many strands got through. So yeah, just finding the the hole. Wow. That's pretty tight. There. Count four. Alright, so I want to make a knot for the slip knot. Still got four. Uh, I want it a little bit tighter. And then I'll pull through. Alright, so for this knot, no, um, it's definitely. It's definitely starting out smaller, so I need to increase. I'm going to need to increase. I want to increase on the ends, but I, I think I tightened it too much in parts. I made, I made mistakes. All right, I've been somewhat cautious about doing uh, increases. I've been doing one increase on either side. Back and forth, I've been giving it like one. Uh, I want to give it just enough room so that I could put another uh, sec uh, like a sock like this thing this sock right here if I need to if this isn't enough if it's like 10 degrees or at zero I want to have enough room for that I know it can stretch uh, it's just it's just hard to decide without experience do I increase do I not it's kind of a flip of the coin thing at this point I haven't been paying attention to the time, but uh, things are seem to be moving along pretty quickly. Starting in on the bottom flap, gonna get to the heel, and then uh, start moving back and forth around. And I'll cinch, I'll reduce on the side. I'll reduce on the side more than the than the back. Well, on this one, I'm actually naturally getting a curve because I was hitting the the corners a little bringing the corners down every time I was going back and forth so now I gotta deal with this space I don't think I need to do any 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 uh, tightening so I walked around at like 4 a.m. looking at the parking lots that say no overnight parking and the bus station at the Whole Foods at Safeway at Walmart they all have cars parking overnight uh, Safeway does put the warning, so they are doing some some uh, loose enforcement. They have the stringent warnings, but there doesn't appear to be like a running out of the area of of people uh, from overnight parking. I haven't gotten bothered, so it's it's been pretty nice. Um, you see those signs, and then you gotta wonder what the enforcement is like after that. I just had this fox coming down the trail. I turn around and I didn't have the light on, but he was like coming behind me. I thought he's following me. Turn the light on and then he goes into the woods. And then I start heading towards him. I'm like, excuse me? You trying to get me? And then here he just he was just following the trail. He just went in the woods and went around me. And I saw him on the trail heading down heading down the hill he just had to get around me enter your mango quantity and touch the one place your mango in the bag too well I intend to leave today and go 30 miles 30 minutes drive south of here it's supposed to be a slightly warmer because it's gonna get into the single digits in like three days around here 
and it'll be just lower elevation. This is like 7,000 elevation. Get down the lower elevation, further south, I should find better relief. I bet cats have an easier time uh, living longer than dogs because they're able to supplement their, their cat food with catching food, whereas dogs can't catch anything. So dogs are entirely reliant on that dog food. And they live out of a bag of, like a bag. Why can't humans do that? Because it's completely unhealthy. But I was thinking, you know, cats can have a tendency to be able to supplement by catching mice, whereas dogs can't. All right, so I guess I just reserved the puzzler room in the library. I thought I could just sit in here in between their uh, their meetings or whatever. It said there was not much of a schedule today, but I reserved it in the puzzler room. A lot of neat knickknacks. I just want to spend a, minute, a little bit of time in here. It's rare to see a library that lets its guard down and has a couple of uh, entries and exits. Normally, most, most libraries actually lock that door. The patio door, they usually lock that. Yeah, as much as I'd like to look around, I'm going to take one more look at my my GPS because it's, it's saying there's some kind of historical site nearby, but my, my Google Maps does not recognize it. Um, I'm going to take a look at that GPS and then I guess I'll, <laughs> there's like, I guess I really can't walk, I maybe could walk around the that building but it's not clear I'll just I'll just take the long way and I'll check that out enough if it's really not that interesting I'll just head out the sooner kind of the sooner the better I would not doubt that this home is worth a million dollars and there's not much to it but the the, the affluence is just very high in this area even that small house it's like living on the coast <clears throat> all right so what i'm closest to is barney ford home museum and it's an escaped slave not far from here i don't know whatever they'll probably charge money so that's that's what's in Breckenridge for historical sites. All right, I think I'm gonna fly my drone through around here if I can. I'm at zero percent on my iPod for battery life. I wish that Android could have a good working app for the DJI. I, it works best on my iPod. All right, I'm gonna check out this library. It's a very busy city. No, I want I, I want to use it. Okay, okay. Well, who knows a, who like you who's can go to the Park County office and ask them if you want the they Park County thing. office. Okay, yeah, they the got their own building. They, yeah, they got their own is building it, right behind the dollar store, but right above it. Basically. Is that far? Is that far? Well, it's too far to walk, probably. But you is can it? drive there. Yeah. That's oh, the one oh look at 